Welcome to Worship with Holy Love Lutheran Church. It has been a week. This week we've welcomed over 90 kids in through our day camp program, Run with Rainbow Trail Lutheran Camp. It was a great time, super exhausting, but I wanna to continue to invite us to pray for the youth that have encountered Christ in this last week. Let us begin with our confession and assurance of God's good forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose steadfast love endures forever. Amen. Let us now confess our sin before God. Merciful God, we confess that we have not followed your path, but have chosen our own way. Instead of putting others before ourselves, we long to take the best seats at the table. When met by those in need, we have too often passed by on the other side. Set us again on the path of life. Save us from ourselves and free us to love our neighbors. Amen. Hear the good news. God does not deal with us according to our sins, but delights in granting pardon and in mercy. In the name of Christ Jesus, your sins are forgiven. You are free to love as God loves. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and also with you. The fruit of the Spirit is not a coconut. The fruit of the Spirit is not a coconut. If you want to be a coconut, you might as well be a coconut. Let us pray. Blessed Lord God, you have caused the Holy Scriptures to be written for the nourishment of your people. Grant that we may hear them, read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest them, that comforted by your promises, we may embrace and forever hold fast to the hope of eternal life, which you have given us in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Paul, an apostle, sent by neither human commission nor from human authorities, but through Jesus Christ and God the Father, who raised him from the dead and all the members of God's family who are with me, to the churches of Galatia, grace and to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, who gave himself for our sins and set us free from the present evil age, according to the will of God our Father, to whom the be the glory forever and ever. Amen. I am astonished that you are so quickly deserting the one who called you in the grace of Christ and are turning to a different gospel. Not that there is another gospel, but there are some who are confusing you who are confusing you and want to pervert the gospel of Christ. But even if we are even if we or an angel come from heaven should proclaim you a gospel contrary to what we proclaimed you let that one be accursed 
as we have said before, so now I repeat, if anyone proclaims you a gospel contrary to what you received, let that one be accursed. I am now seek am I now seeking human approval or God's approval? And I'm trying or am I trying to please people? If I were still trying to pre please people, I would not be a servant of Christ. For God alone my soul waits in silence. From him comes my salvation. He alone is my rock and my salvation. My fortress, I shall never be shaken. On God rests my deliverance and my honor. My mighty rock, my refuge is in God. Trust in him at all times, O people. Pour out your heart before him. God is a refuge for us. Today's sermon text is from the 19th chapter of 1 Kings. Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done and how he had killed all the prophets with the sword. Then Jezebel sent a message to Elijah saying, So may the gods do to me and more also, if I do not make your life like the one of them by this time tomorrow. Then he, Elijah, was afraid. He got up and fled for his life and came to Beersheba, which belonged to Judah. He left his servant there. But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a bro solitary broom tree. He asked that he might die. It is enough now, O Lord. Take away my life, for I am no better than my ancestors. Then he lay down under the broom tree and fell asleep. Suddenly, an angel touched him and said to him, Get up and eat. Elijah looked, and there at his head was a cake baked on hot stones and a jar of water. He ate and drank and lay down again. The angel of the Lord came to him a second time, touched him, and said, Get up and eat, or the journey will be too much for you. He got up and ate and drank. Then he went in the strength of that food for forty days and forty nights to Horeb, the Mount of God. At that place he came to a cave and spent the night there. Then the word of the Lord came to him, saying, What are you doing here, Elijah? He answered, I have been very zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts, for the Israelites have forsaken the covenant, thrown down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left, and they are seeking my life to take it away. God said, Go out and stand on the mountain before the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. Now there was a great wind, so strong that it was splitting mountains and breaking rocks in pieces before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, there was an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a sound of sheer silence. When Elijah heard it, he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood at the entrance of the cave. Then there came a voice to him that said, What are you doing here, Elijah? He answered, I have been very zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts, for the Israelites have forsaken your covenant, thrown down your altars, and killed your prophets by the sword. I alone am left, and they are seeking my life to take it away. Then the Lord said to him, Go, return on your way to the wilderness of Damascus. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our summer series, Deeper Dive into the Story and Life of Elijah, continues. But you may have noticed that we skipped chapter 18. Last week we did 1 Kings chapter 17, and then this week we jumped into the 19th chapter. In chapter 18, Elijah infamously calls fire down from heaven onto a soaked, drenched altar. Elijah proves yet again that God is the one true God in this great showdown between Ahab and Jezebel's gods and the God of Israel. What had happened was the priests of the other religion was, were invited to come and try to get their God to start a fire. And all day long they cried and they screamed to their God. Nothing happened. So then that evening Elijah has the water thrown on the altar till it's drenched, like I said, and then he prays. He says, O Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, let 
all, let it be known this day that you are God in Israel, that I am your servant, and that I have done all these things at your bidding. Answer me, O Lord, answer me so that this people may know that you, O Lord, are God, and that you have turned their hearts back. God answers instantly, fire falls from heaven, engulfs the entire altar and even the water. It's a super cool story. And I want to emphasize, too, that Elijah's prayer harks back to the ancientness of God. Elijah lives hundreds of years after Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, who became known as Israel. Elijah calls on the God of those great ancestors of our faith. Chapter 18 is a super cool story. It's great imagery. It's powerful. It proves that God is bigger than anyone else, that God is certainly bigger than the corrupt leaders of Ahab and Jezebel. And after that intense spiritual victory, we get into chapter 19, where we picked up today. Peak moment in faith, Elijah does the super cool thing, and then he is running for his life, terrified. He hits the deepest low, he leaves his servant, and he is alone. He hides under a broom tree. I want to be clear about that. He hides under a broom tree. To use some modern language, Elijah is burnt out. He's spent. He's done. Even after this great, impressive victory, Elijah is done. <laughs> he's terrified and scared. Notice, too, though, that the tree Elijah hides under is a broom tree. Now, a broom tree in the desert areas is just kind of a tree that grows maybe about 10 feet, spindly, scraggly. Think Charlie Brown's Christmas tree. It's useless, but it's called a broom tree because guess what it's useful for? A broom. <laughs> like so much, our world tells us you have to keep things in use. This tree that seems useless? No, use it. It can be a broom still. Isn't that ingenious? The world tells us you got to keep providing. You got to keep doing. You've got to keep wondering and worrying about the future. But this story, when Elijah has hit his darkest low, his moment of utter despair, shows us God's provision, God's partnership, and God's posterity, the future that God provides. Now, I want to be clear that it's okay to hit low spiritual moments in our lives. It's okay to feel desolate and deserted, and to know that these are just seasons, too. That doesn't minimize the pain, and that doesn't minimize what you're going through. But to know that it's temporary. God is still with you in those moments. The importance of rest is really clarified through Elijah hiding under this broom tree. After this past week of day camp, rest is critical, <laughs> let me tell you. In a moment of rest, of utter despair, God is the one who does the providing. When Elijah only sleeps, he wakes up to find food has been gathered. When Elijah only sleeps, he wakes up to find it's baked food. It's not even just like some grapes or something. God provides abundantly in the partnership. Now, once Elijah has been fortified again, he runs for 40 days and 40 nights. He travels to the Mount of Horeb. And there, God says, I will meet you. I will meet you. After this spiritual high, this intense spiritual low, go again to another physical mountain, and I'll meet you there. Okay, great. And when Elijah gets there at first, there's a violent cracking wind that shakes the very earth. You might be thinking about a couple weeks back when I preached on the Holy Spirit and the word ruach, meaning wind or breath. Ah, but it says God's not in that wind. God's not in the violent cracking wind. God's also not in the earthquake, the very physical foundations shaking. Nor in that third thing that shows up, the fire. God's not in that. So all your thoughts of Pentecost, not quite. Instead, God shows up in the sheer silence. In the moment of rest, the partnership is established. In the moment of trust, the partnership is continued. Our world tells us that you must keep moving, that you must keep doing, that you must produce, produce, produce. 
And God says, no, stop. The sheer silence confronts us and shows us how foolish our thoughts have been. The work continues that God has called us to. In our moments of silence, we get to hear again anew where God is leading us. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us profess the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Joining with our siblings in Christ throughout the world, let us pray before our Lord. Good, gracious, and eternal Lord, we give you thanks for this day. Thank you for a chance to worship, to proclaim your life, and to proclaim your work in our lives. Continue to guide us and to empower us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, we give you thanks for all the youth who have gone through in this last week. We pray that you would continue to kindle their spirits for you. Help them to see you in their regular lives. Help them to grow in faith in Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, our great provider, Thank you for all the volunteers and camp workers who helped make the camp possible. We pray for rest and solidarity. Lord, in your mercy, 
hear our prayer. God, our healer, we pray for all who have need in mind, in body, or in spirit. Surround them in your mercies, guide them with your love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Trusting that you hear us and knowing that you care, we lay our prayers before your throne of grace, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of our Lord be with you all, and also with you. Please share a sign of peace with one another. Thank you for being part of Holy Love's worshiping community. I ask that in this time, we respond to God with a thankful heart. As you give, we are able to continue our ministries, including this recorded service. You can give online via our PayPal link on our website. You can give via the QR code seen on the screen, or you can send a check into the church. However you choose to financially give, we really appreciate it. It helps us continue spreading the mission and gospel of Christ. Let us pray. God of creation, all you have made is good, and your love endures forever. You bring forth bread from the earth and fruit from the vine. Nourish us with these gifts, that we might be for the world signs of your gracious presence in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church here on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. which was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks. He broke it 
and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, all of you. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper was over, he took the cup. Again, he gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Beloved of God, for as often as we eat of this bread and drink of this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he returns. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Taste and see the goodness of the Lord. This is the body and blood of Christ given and shed for you. All are welcome at Christ's table. Let us pray. O oh God, we give you thanks that you have set before us this feast, the body and blood of your Son. By your Spirit, strengthen us to serve all in need and to give ourselves away as bread for the hungry. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please receive the benediction. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you with grace and mercy. May the Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Woo!